Growing up in Vietnam, in a somewhat traditional, typical Asian family where I was taught to obey, to follow directions from the elders. So freedom to express and individualism are not generally welcomed or accepted. Thus, being gay, not acting manly enough, or showing interest in toys that are not supposedly made to your biological gender, could be signs of being abnormal or sick. So I recall myself constantly hearing my family's criticism when I was a child. A man should not show your weakness. Don't be a sissy. So you are supposed to look like a certain type of masculinity. Showing power, doing something that men do or act straight that was how my parents left me, made me feel very estranged, alienated, and worthless for years of my childhood. I thought to myself, if I can be a straight man, I cannot succeed in this society. But you know what? The result of letting in so much negative criticism from family members somewhat pushes me away from the feeling of being accepted to a place where I feel like no matter how good I am as a person, I will never be the child that they wanted. The feeling of estrangement built an invisible wall between me and my family. I know by stepping away from this silent conflict with them and leaving us a safe place, a safe space between us, I have unconsciously reversed the emotional abuse towards them. I decided never to talk about my sexuality nor my personal, personal life anymore with my family. I also decided to put on social media a small survey where I asked friends whether they have experienced emotional abuse and what have they done to deal with it. So let's um, take a look at the definition of emotional or psycholo uh, psychological abuse. Emotional or psychological abuse occurs in some forms in all abusive relationships. It is a very effective tactic used by the abusive partners to obtain power, control, and it can cause ex extreme damage to the victim's self-esteem. Commonly, emotional abuse makes the victim feel like they are responsible for the abuse, to feel crazy, worthless, or even hopeless. I received a lot more comments, replies than I thought, discussing and sharing personal stories of how they became a victim of emotional or psychological abuse from their dearest ones in life. So out of um, the 600 reactions, 100 comments and 28 shares, there is one comment that um, got my attention. He is a son in his 20s. He shares his story of being emotionally abused by his mother, criticizing him for being unemployed. Had he never known that it was also him to do the same thing to her by doing nothing but eat and sleep for months of the pandemic lockdown. Ironically, we pressure our loved one the most because we care for them so much. He knew so well that he and his mother suffer from each other. But why can he do something to stop? Why does emotional abuse keep happening times and times again in our closest relationships? According to Doctor of Psychology and Education, Mrs. Tonya, currently giving lectures at Ho Chi Minh City University of Education, we are all victims of emotional or psychological abuse in the Eastern society. We approve 
we tolerate emotional or psychological abuse. We even use it in the name of parents raising children, employers correcting employees. We make excuses ourselves to allow us to suffer from emotional abuse. So why must we say no to emotional or psychological abuse? Because mental scars last longer than physical ones. A hit from a verbal attack leads greater damage to our brand cells. So why do we keep running into toxic relationships to get hurt over again? Because a lack of internal power. In reality, escaping one abusive relationship or a toxic one doesn't mean that you are protected from another one in the future, right? The most practical way is not to run away from it, but to be strong enough to deal with it yourself, and then you can help other later. But how? The answer is to practice self-healing. Learn to think positive, forgive, be generous, not tolerant, but accept the fact that we cannot fully avoid negativity in life. So I have four tips for you guys before we end this speech um, to practice self-healing. So these tips are from my personal experience and also inspired by the book, The Atlas of Happiness, The Global Secrets of How to Be Happy by Helen Russell. It's a very good book. Um, it will bring you doses and doses of happiness and, and, and positivity. I recommend you buy and read it. So here are my four tips. They are free, all right? Number one, when you feel sad, upset, hopeless, allow yourself to cry. You know, crying, it's natural. It will help you to reduce stress. But you have to let yourself go, let the tears go down. It's a practice, an exercise to balance your emotions. After you cried, you have to smile to yourself in the mirror. It sounds very funny, right? Talking to yourself, smiling to yourself in the mirror, it's the best way to, to teach your, your mind to love your body, love your personality, love the one in the mirror. So crying, smiling, or laughing are fundamental ways to reduce stress. And it's free. That's the first tip. The second one, I would like to show you a dance move to practice dance by yourself to your favorite music. If you cannot find someone to cheer you up, you better do it yourself. And this is the three step of self dancing by Dustin. Can I have some music, please? You guys can stand up. You guys stand up with me, all right? Now, any music. This is my favorite type of music. This song is called Acid House. We gotta start by hugging ourselves. Hugging yourself is the best way for you to teach you to learn to love yourself. We all need to love ourselves. Then you open your arms. So when you know how to love yourself, you open to help other people. And then the last one is raise your hands. Your hands in the sky, release your spirit, feel free. Now, we're gonna do one, two, three. You can close your eyes. One, two, open your arms. And then raise your spirit. You can do faster. Faster. See? It's easy. All right, feel the music. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I believe that dancing, it's magic. It will boost up your positivity. You don't have to, to you know, go to a bar, a club to be dancing. Dancing in your room by yourself, turn on your music, 
uh, put on your favorite headphones. You can get naked. You can dance with your friends, your partners, your family members, or you know, just dance more. Do it for yourself. Number three, think and apologize more often in your daily conversation with the strangers, with someone you love, with your family, your friends, and to yourself, right? The fourth one is also my last one. We are now living in a world uh, that we are so attached to digital, to social media, to smart devices like laptops, iPhone, uh, smartphones, smart watches. So please remember to unplug one hour per day from all of the digital devices, no watch, no earphones, nothing. And then walk around your neighborhood, get more eye contact while talking to someone, okay? Not at the screen. So this is how we can cope with the new normalcy where people are too stressed to go out, to look at each other, to, re to really have a conversation face to face without any interference of any digital devices. All right. I would like to end this with my favorite quote from Nybert, a contestant of America's Got Talent. You can't wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy. All right. And this is Dustin. Thank you so much for listening.